Welcome to the Parent Life Podcast. My name is Jason Stanland, and I'm the middle school pastor here at Fruit Cove Baptist Church. This is a ministry of that church here in Jacksonville, Florida, and we address critical topics for parents wanting to raise Christian children. Our format is a little different today. Uh, earlier in the day, I was able to interview Dr. Rob Renow of Visionary Family Ministries, and it was an excellent time with him. So we're actually going to jump into that and then come back at the end. I have a special opportunity just for you. Well, uh, Dr. Reno, thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you for being a part of the Parent Life Podcast. Again, we, we're kind of created this for parents in our communities, part of our church as a resource uh, or a library, if you will, of topics where when they run into a problem or an issue, uh, they can go back and you know refer to it, kind of tee them up as far as topics for discussion with their kid. And one of those topics that I run into with parents a lot is my kid no longer wants to come to church. Yep. Um, and they make various different, uh, uh, we'll call them agreements or barters and trades, like you can bring your phone and play on the games or any of those things. And so uh, you wrote a book, Five Reasons for Spiritual Apathy in Teens. And uh, I got a hold of it when you came for our Parent Life Conference, which was excellent. Uh, thank you so much for that. But um, really wanted you to just kind of dive into this a little bit more for parents and then, you know, just give us an overview. And then we'll talk a little bit more about some deeper subjects. Sure. Well, thanks, Jason. I've been looking forward to talking with you. Um, so first of all, just kind of setting realistic expectations for spiritual growth for teenagers. So as a father, I've got seven kids. My oldest is 23 and married, and then I've got a seven-year-old on the other end. But if you think in terms of like ages 10 to 20, you know, my expectations for my kids during 10 to 20 is that every year they will get more mature. Every year right. they will get more godly. Yeah. Every year they will be more honoring of me and closer to the Lord. Like, you know what I mean? 11, 12, 13, 14. Right. Every year is going to get better that's and better. That's what we all hope for, right? No, yeah, exactly. Now, uh, you know, what I would ask parents is, okay, I want you to think back to your 10 to 20 years and ask yourself if that's your graph. Was that your chart that not every single year, right? Every one of us says, uh, no, that was not right. the way I did it. So a really healthy spiritual growth from 10 to 20 is up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down, but an overall trajectory of up. Okay, that's would right. be a really healthy path for my kids uh, and, and your kids. So, but what happens when we're in those months or years when things aren't going really well? We're getting a lot of uh, blah and flat and whatever, and our kids just seem kind of cold and distant, especially to spiritual things. So, we in our, our, our research and our study and our study of scripture, you know, have found five common reasons why teenagers get apathetic towards spiritual things. Not the only reasons, but there are five really common ones. One is that the parent's heart is not turned to the teenager. Mm. In other words, that the parent doesn't have passion and vision and fire in their belly to build a heart-connected relationship with their teenager and help their teenager grow in their faith. They're delegating the training of the kid to the Christian school. They're dropping them off at youth group, but they don't have passion and fire in their own right. belly for it. Another reason is that the teenager's heart might not be turned to the parent. Mm -hmm. So you have a parent who's all in, right, and invested in the relationship with their child and the shepherding of their child, but the teenager has taken the heart away from mom and dad, uh, given it to friends, given it to the gizmo or right. whatever that is. The th a third reason is the presence of secret sin. Anytime you know, sin, and this is all the way back to the Garden of Eden, sin always wants to hide. Sin always wants the darkness. So if your kid's looking at porn, he's probably not doing it on the TV in the living room, right? It's right. probably somewhere on the phone. It's in the room somewhere else. It's going to be hidden. Sin always works like that. And whenever there's secret sin in our lives, um, it acts like a, a spiritual cancer for us. And so a lot of kids are struggling with secret struggles. And those secret struggles, because they're in the darkness, are having that spiritual cancerous effect. A fourth reason is a lot of kids are acting spiritually weak because they're not getting spiritual food. Um, there's three main meals every Christian needs if they're going to be strong. They got to spend personal time with God. They got to spend family time with God, and they've got to have worship in the corporate church. And for a lot of our teenagers, they don't have any of those. They don't have personal time with God. They don't have family worship in the home, and they're never in the church service. 
they've got youth group, they've got Christian school, they've got a retreat or a mission trip, which are awesome things, right. but they're not the spiritual meals that God says everybody needs. So sometimes kids are getting vitamins, but yeah. no meals. And as a result, they're acting very weak. Yeah, um, fifth helpful. reason, and, and we do this one last, um, because the, the fifth reason is a spirit of rebellion that a child has a spirit of rebellion in their heart. We do this last because we deal with a lot of parents, Jason, who say, well, I'll tell you what my kid's problem is. He's got a rebellious attitude. And we fix that rebellious attitude, everything will be fine. Okay, maybe, maybe they do have a rebellious spirit and a rebellious attitude, but right. I'd rather spend a whole lot more time on one through four. Is your heart with your teenager? Right. Do you, have you won your teenager's heart to you? Have, are, is your teenager struggling with something in secret that you don't even know about? Are you helping them get their meals? Let's spend a whole lot of time there before we dive into this issue of a rebellious spirit. It's very possible that's what it is. And there are some gospel responses to that. Um, but I just don't like to jump into that one right. too quickly. So what do you want to talk about? Yeah, I like how you did rebellious spirit at the end in the book, because I think as parents, we tend to jump into that. You know, it's our kids' fault, and we never want to admit that it could be our our fault or our inclination. So I love how you started the book with turning the hearts toward of parents towards their kids. Um, so for a parent who wants to do that and, th and they have this this desire to turn their hearts towards their kids, how would you say this is a great way to start communicating that you have turned your heart towards your child so that your child knows it, um, if that makes sense? Yeah. So parents, listen, here's where we start with this. I would challenge you, 30 days, pray, 10 seconds a day. It's not even 10 seconds, it's five seconds. God, turn my heart to the ministry of my children. Turn my heart to the ministry of my kids. Make it the number one mission of my life to help my children safely home to heaven. You see, Here's a parenting scripture that God's really been convicting me on right now. It's Matthew 6, 33. Jesus says, seek first the kingdom of God and all these things will be added to you as well. That Jesus is teaching there in the context of the things we worry about, right? We worry about our clothes. We worry about our food. We worry about this. He says, look, you seek first me, seek first my righteousness, and I'm going to take care of you. So what, what God's been dealing with me on this is, do I believe that as a parent, do, see, I'm stressed about my kids' ACT scores and right their job and college and all this kind of stuff. Do I really believe that if my children will follow Jesus, that he will take care of everything they need? Right. If I believe that, it changes the way I parent. I, I don't get freaked out about the stuff of earth. I mean, it's important. Let's study. Let's get our grades. Let's go apply for colleges, all that. My burden and my concern, and you asked, well, how do you say it to your kids? This is how you say it to your kids. You passionately define success for them, which is this. Hey, you're 15 years old. In 10 years, God willing, you're going to be out of my house. You're going to be on your own. You're going to be a grown right. adult, maybe even sooner than that, right? Right. Listen, let me tell you what success would be for me as your father. Success for me as your father is that you would love God with all mm -hmm. your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, mm -hmm. and you'd be seeking his will for your life. You may not be the smartest person in town. You may not be the most athletic person in town. You may not be the richest person in town. You know, God's going to use the gifts he's given you, and I hope he does. But what I want for you is for you to follow Christ. When you speak to your children like that, you are communicating to them very directly that your heart's with them and your heart's with the Lord. And I love that because it is a direct statement to them. But again, it's this, hey, let me tell you where my priorities are at for right. you. Um, and, you know, a lot of times the kids, they catch what we do or they catch our priorities more than what they hear. And so, like you said, start praying, God, turn my heart towards you. That realigns our priorities. And so then when we say the priorities to our kids, they're like, okay, yeah, I've seen this in your life. And so it reflects. So I like that. It's really good. Um, let's talk about the presence of secret sin then real quick. Um, so let's say you're kind of going through it and you feel like your heart's towards your kids and your kids are hearts towards you. You've given some time even to like, let that flesh out. Um, and now you're beginning to wonder, is there some secret sin? Like how likely is there secret sin? And then how should a parent begin to approach that? Yeah. Well, you know, I ask parents, I say, well, Hey, were you a pretty good kid when you were growing up? A lot of people raise their hand. Yeah, I was a pretty good kid. I mean, they're not being arrogant. They're just saying, you know, yeah, I was a decent kid. And I say, okay, did you have some secret struggles, some secret problems, some things that were going on in your heart and in your mind that just were not holy, were not godly, and your parents had no clue? 
And they're like, oh yeah, I definitely had some stuff going on. My parents yeah. had no clue about. So I'm like, okay, so you were a pretty good kid and you had secret problems. Yeah. Hey, your teenager, your 15 year old daughter, is she a pretty good kid? Oh yeah, yeah, she's a pretty good kid. All right, hypothetically then, right. she might just have some secret problems. Yeah. So the, 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 I'm, a, I'm a front door guy. What, what that means is, now let's try the direct route first in a situation. Simple so the first, direct yeah. route with that 15 year old daughter is something like this. Hey, honey, I got kind of a weird question to ask you. I know that when I was your age, I, I had some things going on in my mind and in my heart um, that I was really struggling with, um, things that weren't pleasing to God. Um, and I never told my parents, I was really dealing with it in private. And I just wanted to ask you, are, are there any things going on right now for you just in secret and in private, some areas of struggle that you have, um, that I could help you with, because I don't ever want you to have to deal with these things on your own. You can tell me anything, you know, I've told you that since you're a little girl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've told you. Okay. Well, I really mean it. Is there anything going on that, that you'd like to share with me that I could help with? Or do you, if you want to think about it, you can talk to me later. So I'm just asking, hey, is there any secret sin in your life? Right. I don't know what I'm going to get, but it's a good question every two or three months, not every day, right? Right. Every two or three months checking in because, hey, when you were their age, that's what you were dealing with. But I like how you said it, even every two or three months, you know, like really awesome parents back in the day might have given their kid like, you know, the talk or something exactly. like that. If they were awesome, that's what they did. Right. Having an ongoing open conversation with your kid. Oh, man, that's that's like crazy idea. Um, and also, I like what you said. You use the example of your daughter, you know, dad to daughter asking this question. I feel like a lot of dads, we feel like, well, that's, you know, my daughter. Let's go let mom handle that one. I'll talk to the boys or something. But again, you know, if we're the spiritual head of our household, God has still required this of us that we can be open and, and truthful with our kids and ask them and have that kind of intimacy there because that reflects the relationship of God with us. Uh, so you said the front door. Explain what then the back door might look like or a side door or a window or any other way. But like, hey, let's talk about it. Well, the back door or the side door is sometimes just going to be in prayer you have a sense that your child is struggling and they're not opening up to you. They're not opening the front door when you knock on it. Mm -hmm. So it's God, would you please work in a way that my son or daughter would want to talk to me or Lord, if they are struggling with something in secret, would you uh, have them get caught? Right. Would you have mm -hmm. them that, they, that get you brought to get light? Caught. That's right. Whether it's something sexual, whether it's something uh, uh, online, whether it's just some, you know, one of the secret sins that a lot of teenagers are struggling with is hatred and mm -hmm. unforgiveness. They have a person at school or a person at church or a sibling that they are really dealing with a spirit of hatred and, and bitterness toward them. They're not sharing it. They're not talking about it other than just giving bad attitude as it relates to that person. But that that spirit of hatred and unforgiveness is working a, a cancer in their heart too. Well, that is just so much for us to just kind of think through. I know, like, I feel like parents who are going to listen to this episode or view it on YouTube, it's just going to be a lot of content. And so again, you know, parents who are listening to this, go back, listen to it a couple times, uh, get the book, find some other resources. Uh, I know your website, it's kind of on the, the video for those who are watching, but it's visionary fam dot com right fam visionaryfam.com also you have a podcast as well what's the name of that podcast yeah it's called family vision like television so every monday <laughs> uh, amy and i are in the studio you know 20 minutes or so just talking about things god's teaching us as parents we're about ready to record some marriage sessions that'll be that'll, that'll be, be juicy and uh, <laughs> uh, just different scriptures that are helping right. us uh because uh, our, our family we, we get on track and then we fall off and God puts right. us back on track and we fall off. So um, just a lot of our journey and we hope it's encouraging. Well, thank you so much for joining us. And hey, I want to encourage parents with the phrase that you said at the conference constantly, if it's worth doing, it's worth doing poorly. And and hey, uh, that was straight from Dr. Renow. And if there's a man, I don't know if I can do it 100%, fine, do it 40%, do it 50%, do it to the best of your ability. So that at least your kids see that your heart has been turned to the Lord and to them. So, uh, Dr. Reno, thank you very much for joining us for this episode. Uh, again, everybody, I highly encourage you go to his website, go to his podcast, get some more information. There's tons of resources, even curriculum for how to do uh, family devotions. I found those personally a great resource. And so I would really appreciate uh, all of you guys just reaching out to that. And so, Dr. Reno, thank you very much for joining us today. Thanks. I love talking to you. 
Wow, parents, I hope you really enjoyed that moment with Dr. Reno. It was so gracious of him to come on and share his wisdom. Hope that you got to check in with his uh, Visionary Family Ministries, either at visionaryfam.com or you can go to Family Vision, his podcast. One of his other resources was this book that he gave uh, to me, and he graciously has given us 10 copies that we can give to you. So the next 10 people who email us at parentlife at fruitcove.com get a free copy if you give us your name and your mailing address. Hey, if you have any more questions about Fruit Cove and her ministries, you can go to fruitcove.com. We'd love to hear more from you. You can email and interact with us. And if you subscribe, then you get the weekly update of the new uh, episode that's just come out. Thank you so much for joining, and we'll see you next week.